uh, today's class is basically not a chapter with, but it's definitely something which is very important. And this year, there was a question also which came from here. So that makes it very, very important. So today, our topic will be bonding. Right? Bonding or bonds. In other words, we write bonds. What does this bonds stands for? Right, so bonds. Now, basically, to understand, we all should understand one thing. In this world, there is no free lunch. What do you mean by this? There is no free lunch. We mean that if you are contributing something, then only you get something else. If you are not doing something else, no one is going to come and give you a free lunch for anything of that sort. Same goes. In nature, let's talk about a beggar who is on the street. What is his dream? I'm talking monetary dream. What should be his monetary dream? Maybe he is getting thousand rupees in a month. His dream will be to get say ten thousand rupees. A fellow getting ten thousand rupees will try to get a lakh rupees in a month. Lakh will try to get ten lakhs. Somebody like Mukesh Ambani, his dream would be to be like the noble people or Prince Charles or Prince Williams. Or if, for that matter, maybe more ambitious things they can do. Same goes for Jeff Bezos. What was his aim? He wanted to go be the first man in space. I'm sure you must have uh, read newspapers. There was a competition which was going on between three people who were involved in space tourism. One is Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, the richest man in the world at this moment, and of course uh, Richard Branson. So Richard Branson was the first who took the commercial flight and he went to space, followed immediately within 10 days. Jeff Bezos has also gone. So this is a dream which people has, or aspiration which people has to go. So when Jeff Bezos came down, he told that I thank uh, the employees of Amazon, Amazon to make it possible that I could be the man going to space. So he went to space in his own rocket and he came back to the Earth. So these are the dreams which everyone has. So we all have a dream. Same. If you go for, since we are made up of atoms and molecules, so these atoms and molecules also have a particular uh, dream. They want, what is a dream? They want to be stable. Now, how they can be stable? They can only be stable if they attain the nearest noble gas configuration. For example, let's talk about the three noble gases. One is helium, which is two comma, uh, which is two. Neon, which is two comma eight. And that's an argon, which is 2,8,2. I'm talking about, there are three noble gases. Remember, one is helium, one is neon, one is argon. What are noble gases? Which is the completely filled outermost shell. Here it has got only one shell, K shell, and it's completely filled. Neon has got two shells, one is K, one is L. And both the shells are completely filled. Argon, if you see, it has got three shells. And all the three shells are completely. So what about the other elements which are present there? Maybe like a sodium. Sodium is 11 and its configuration with 2, 8, 1. So it is not filled. These are noble gases, but these are not noble. So it wants to become like a noble gas. Or it wants to attain the nearest noble gas configuration. So which among the three is its nearest? This is very far away. It's definitely not the nearest. Neon or argon. To become like neon, it needs to remove this one electron. And to become like argon, it needs to get another seven electrons. Neon means minus one electron becomes like neon. And if it gets seven electrons, it will become like argon. So definitely, this is not the nearest. The nearest is this. So the nearest noble gas in this case is neon. So what it should do? It should lose sodium, should lose that one electron to become sodium ion. And now this one's configuration and neon's configuration is same. So I just picked up a random example like sodium, how it can be attained the nearest noble gas configuration. Let's take another example. Let's talk about oxygen. Oxygen is 2 comma 6. So which is the nearest noble gas for oxygen? Helium, to become like helium, it has to lose six electrons. It has to lose six electrons. But to become a neon, it needs to gain two electrons. 
So definitely only two here. To lose six is difficult. So the nearest is neon again. So how this oxygen can be like neon? Sodium became like neon by losing that one electron. But what about oxygen? How can it become like neon? So neon in oxygen in this case will lose two electrons and it's sink. When it loses electron, it becomes positive ion. When it gains electron, it becomes negative ion. So two minus. Now this one's configuration, this one's configuration is same as that of neon. So both of these became stable and both of these have attained the nearest noble gas configuration. So in every atom, every element, their ultimate purpose of existence is stability. So to become the stable or to have the stable configuration, the only way they can do it is by attaining the nearest noble gas configuration. So the only way they can attain the nearest noble gas configuration <clears throat> is either by losing electrons or by gaining electrons. When an element loses electrons or gains electrons, then the kind of bond which is formed is known as ionic bond. Keep this in mind. So the name of the kind of a bond which is formed is ionic bond, or sometimes it is also referred to take it as ionic bond. Let's move it. Okay, so it is ionic bond is formed. Clear? So this is the, or what is ionic bond now to define what is the type of ionic bond? Where the bond is formed by transfer of electrons. What is transfer of electrons? One atom loses, one atom gains. So when such a thing happens, such a bond which will be formed, ionic bond. Put this in your mind. See, these, these are two chapters, topics I'm starting, I mean, I'm touching. So this video is very, very, very important. Remember this. Why this is very important? Because this is not a chapter I'm doing. I'm doing a topic which is related to both the chapters. And do you do question? And this is a basic foundation of chemistry. If one day you'll be good in chemistry, you have to know this. If you're not sure with this, you'll never be good in chemistry. Take mark my one word. <coughs> so this is the ironing bond. So I run this. Now, let's say, Okay, so there is one more kind of bond. I just name this. One more bond kind of bond is there. This is covalent bond. So basically, there are actually three types of bond. Basically, there are three types of bond. The first bond is known as ionic bond. The second bond is known as covalent bond. And the third bond is known as coordinate bond. Remember this. Ionic bond, covalent bond, coordinate bond. Coordinate is beyond your syllabus, it's not there in your syllabus. So we'll not touch that. You might do it in the higher classes. So you have two types of bond. Ionic is in the chapter metals, non-metals. Covalent is in the chapter carbon and its compounds. So what I'm doing is that I'm just touching both the chapters. Actually, it's not only single chapter I'm doing, I'm doing both the chapters together. So what actually is ionic bond, just how I told you, the bond which is formed, bond which is formed by transfer of electrons, transfer of electrons. So when one gives, the other takes, when such a bond is formed, this type of bond is known as ionic bond. Now, what about covalent bond? Or what is covalent bond? Now, this is the thing. I just tell you the definition first, then I tell you this. So, bond which is formed by sharing of electrons. So, when there is a transfer of electrons, that's ionic. When there is a sharing of electrons, that's covalent. I just compare both between both ionic and covalent. That also comes in the exam. If you check this year's question paper, 2021 question paper, questions were related to this. That's why, please pay attention. In fact, I'm doing this for that purpose also. 
Now, <clears throat> let me tell you a story just to make you understand. Let's say a very rich person, let's say like Mukesh Ambani, the richest man in India, and let's say his driver. Both they go to a five star restaurant and they order for lunch. Right? They have lunch together. Who do you expect is going to pay the bill? Who will pay the bill? Driver will not be able to pay for that five star style of restaurant. Definitely, okay, somebody will pay the bill for it. Yeah. So, what is happening? This fellow is giving, this fellow is taking. So that bond, or such a bond, if it exists in the thing, when a matter will give or a non metal will accept, that type of bond will be nothing but irony bond. But let's take another situation. When there are two college students, or say college students or any two students. So one student has got a hundred rupees in his pocket, another student has got a two hundred rupees in his pocket. And they both want to eat. Chow, let's say, and they go to Shillong Cafe to have it. And the Shillong Cafe, the one plate of chow costs something around 280 rupees. Right? One plate of chow, something around 280 rupees. So, cafe to have some chow. How do you think they are going to pay for the bill? Chow plate costs 280. This fellow also doesn't have that up. This fellow also doesn't have that up. So, what they will do? They will share among themselves and they will make the plate half half whatever and they will take it. They will share the themselves. That's what will happen. When this situation arises uh, between the atoms, then we will call it as a covalent bond. This is a stronger. The bond which is shared, that is ionic, or the bond which is uh, transferred, that is the co uh, sorry, the bond which is shared, that is the covalent, that is the bond uh, or the electrons bond which is formed by transfer of electrons, that is the ionic. Which bond will be stronger? This is a question which has to ask every batch, literally, and every batch, every time, builds is covalent. Sharing is loving. Wrong. This bond is stronger. Ironing bond is stronger. Why ironing bond is stronger? Say, for example, one Mukesh Amani and his driver goes to a five star to order lunch. Definitely, the man who will be chosen by Mukesh Amani and you will be the one who will order. Driver has no choice. He has to eat what is given to him. Yeah. So that means the driver knows what is given, he has to take. But in this case, when the two friends goes for chow, suddenly they decide to have momo. One wants to have chow, one wants to have momo, that means the partnership is over. And there's the end of their thing. So sharing is weaker. Chemistry point of view. I don't know real life, but in chemistry point of view, sharing is weaker. Transfer is stronger. So ionic bonds are always stronger than that of covalent bond. Now this year there was a question which came. Why ionic bonds has got higher melting point? Remember this. High melting point as compared to covalent. Definitely the general answer is because it's stronger. The ionic bonds are stronger. But your actual answer should be because of electrostatic force of attraction between them. I'll come to tell you all this, the reasons a little later. But just remember. High melting point ionic bond, high boiling point ionic bond. Everything high, if you think of, it has got solids, which are generally solids. All the compounds which are generally solids, like solid, which you see. The common salt which we eat. That's an ionic compound, mind it. That's an ionic compound. So ionic compounds are generally solid. But what about the covalent compound? Water, H2O, carbon dioxide gas, which is there. These are covalent, but these are gas. They're not solid generally. Except in a rare case, like dry ice, maybe carbon dioxide, which will be solid. But otherwise, generally, these are solids, these are mostly gases or sometimes liquids. Remember this. So, again, the reason is all because of the bond. Because ionic bonds are stronger and covalent bonds are weaker. That's actually 
comes with the answer with the bot. It is not. So I give you a few examples of ionic bond. I didn't give you a single example of covalent bond. Let me just I'll come to that covalent bond and I'll give you an example. But today, for first, I explain to you basically what is the difference between ionic bond and covalent bond. So both bonds actually attain the nearest noble gas configuration. One bond attains it by sharing of electrons. Another bond attains it by transfer of electrons. The bond which is obtained by sharing of electrons, we call it as a covalent bond, and covalent bond is weaker as compared to that of ionic bond. So just write down this basic thing. Little bit to write down the point. Okay, now, so definitely we got the kind of bond we are talking about. Bonds we got it. Now let's start basically first with ionic bond. Now one part I want you all to remember. This is sometimes not exactly mentioned in the textbook. But this is something which is literally quite important. Suppose <clears throat> there is a matter Suppose there is a matter and there is a non-matter. And I ask you what kind of bond will be formed between the matter and the non-matter. Remember, if there is a bond which is formed between matter and non-matter, it should be always ionic. Why? As I have discussed with the other videos, I have sent you the notes even, matters are loses electrons, non metals gains electrons. So one loses or one gives, the other takes. Means there is a transfer of electrons. So that means this bond which will be formed will be always ionic. But suppose if you come across a non metal and non metal, or between two non metals, let's say. This also loses electrons. Sorry, this also gains electrons. This also gains electrons. That time both are gaining. Both are gaining. So the only option left for them to form a bond will be by sharing of electrons. And sharing of electrons means nothing but covalent bond. So just to identify which among these are ionic, which among these are covalent, I'll write down a few examples. You all will choose, right? You can use the chat box option to send me the chat for that, right? Which of these are ionic and which of these are covalent, right? So uh, you, I'm ready for you. You all will tell me that, right? So MgCl2. Hmm. I've written few. You can just use the chat box option. Send me which among these do you think are the uh, covalent and which one is ionic. So you can write down this covalent dash and that, 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 that. You can write down which of this. Okay. You may not be able to write uh, the way the formulas are there. You can just write it, MGCL2 like that. So you understand.
Dan Nasri. Uh, no one, send me. So, no. Come on, I expect some of you at least. How many I gave you? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Come on, come on. Use the option and then tell me which among these are covalent. If you don't want to write the full part, I can understand C and I, you can write it. But do it. Achha, what do you think about? Okay, I'm giving you another one. Okay, what do you think? Sulfur dioxide. What is sulfur dioxide? Sulfur is a non metal. Oxygen is a non metal. Sulfur is a non metal, oxygen is a non metal. So it should be non metal, non metal, covalent. Hydrogen non metal, oxygen non metal, covalent. Magnesium is a metal, chlorine non metal. So it is ionic. Lead is a metal. Iodine is a non metal, so ionic. Magnesium metal again, oxygen non metal, so it's ionic. Carbon, oxygen, both are non metals, so it's covalent. Both are non metal, hydrogen and sulfur, so it's covalent. I hope you understand how to find out which are metals and which are non metals. See, if you have to find out, I'm telling you a trick, just try to understand. Of course, it's not a part of the thing, I should not be telling you now. I told you before, even. But anyway, this is something which you are supposed to do right from class 9. But anyway, 9 was terrible last year, so once again I am repeating. So see, metal, how do we understand? Suppose I have got an electron configuration of 2, 8, 3. So what is the valence electrons here? The valence electrons here is 3. So any which has got 1 valence electrons or 2 valence electrons or 3 valence electrons, Valence electrons. What are valence electrons? Electrons present in the last shell. Electrons present in the last shell. So that means these are nothing but metals. Right. If it is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 valence electrons, then these will be termed as non metals right so valence electrons if it is one two or three valence electrons these are metals if it is four if it is five it is six it is seven or eight valence electrons this will be termed as non-metals so remember this this is the trick how to find out the valence electrons so for example sodium we know sodium's atomic number is 11 so you can take it as two eight and one so what is this valence electron? The valence electron in this case is 1. So if the valence electron is 1, this is nothing but matter. Okay. If the valence electron is, uh, let's say, um, suppose if it is, say, potassium uh, 19, let's say, 2, or oh, 19, I guess, oh, sorry, 2, 8, 8, 1. So it comes out. Let's take out calcium. Calcium is 20, so it will be 2, 8, a2. Again, you see valence electrons 2. So this is metal. So 1, 2, 3 will be metals, but anything beyond that, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, whatever. 9 is not there. Till 8. So anything will be will be non-metal. So this is how we identify between the metals as well as non-metals. Right? So maybe because of that, I did not get any response from you all. But this is how you should remember which of these are metals, which of these are non-metals. This is the way to identify. Anyway, let's take this. Let's take another one example. 
let's take another one example. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's talk about the ionic bond now. So in your syllabus, if I talk about the ionic bond, there are only three examples are there. So you have two examples. Two examples there. So one is very simple. One is NaCl that is salt, and another one is number two is magnesium oxide. So these two are there. Since there is only two of this. I want you all to memorize by heart. I, I'll explain to you how this preparation takes place. But otherwise, I want you all to write. When you write, prepare for the exams, you write everything which is given in the textbook. A to Z of it. But understanding, I'm going to explain to you this too. So today's target is that I'm going to explain to you only about ionic bond. Maybe another day, maybe on Monday or something, I'll also continue with the covalent bond. Because covalent bond is much more, much more examples are required. So I'll need an entire one class only for covalent bond. If I start now, it will not do anything. So these two are the examples which is actually there in your textbook. I'll tell you how to do it. But while writing or preparing for the exams, you have to write everything of it. So let's take this example. Okay. Let's take it. So first, let's talk about sodium chloride. So sodium, if you see the atomic number, it is 11. Sodium's atomic number is 11. So what is this configuration? This configuration comes to 2, it comes to 8, it comes to 1. So sodium has got how many valence electrons? It has got one valence electron. So that one valence electrons, it will lose. And metals, they lose electrons. So since it's 1, it is a metal. So it will tend to lose. Metal loses electrons. So one electron will become what? And a plus. Right? Same way there is chlorine. Chlorine atomic number is 17. Electronic configuration will be 2, 8 and 7. You have to write all this. Electronic config. Electronic config. You have to write this. So when you write this, chlorine will be 7 electrons. 7, no chance to lose 7 electrons. So you have gain one electron to make it eight. So chlorine gains one electron. When it gains one electron, it becomes Cl minus. Right? So this one electron which sodium loses, that one electron is gained by chlorine. And as a result, Na plus Cl minus is formed. And this is your ionic compound formed by ionic bond. This is an ionic compound which is formed by ionic bond. In reality, if you see, it is like this. If you draw diagram. Last two, this is H, this is 1. This is 2, this is H. 3, 6, 7, 8. Chlorine, if you take it, this is 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And there is 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this one needs to lose one electron. This one is to gain one electron. So this, this will give that one electron here. As a result, this will now become Na plus, And this will become Cl minus. Together, they combine and form Na plus Cl minus or sodium chloride. So this is a diagrammatic representation how the transfer of electrons takes place or how sodium chloride is formed. So this is very, 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 very important. Okay. Very, very, very important. Okay. Let's do the next one. That is, can I drop this? Let me show you the second one which is there in the syllabus. That is magnesium oxide. So there are only two examples. Very easy and very easy to remember. For writing the words you see from the textbook, how it is done. Let's talk about magnesium oxide, the second one. Same way. If you take magnesium, this is 12. 
electronic configuration with 2, 8, and 2. So if you look at magnesium, it's going to lose those two electrons. It's a metal, right? So you lose those two electrons to become Mg2+. Plus. Remember this. What about oxygen? Oxygen is 8. So electronic configuration will be So, the electronic configuration will be 2, 6, right? So, oxygen, it will gain 2 electrons because it's a non metal, right? It needs to gain 2 electrons. So, you take those 2 electrons to become O2 minus. So, together they're going to form the bond, MgO. Now, how does the design or how does this work? That's a magnesium. First two, then eight, then two. So there are two electrons here, K shell, L shell has got eight. Eight. And two in this. Oxygen. First shell has got two. Next shell. A sign. Two hundred four rupees will be done. Okay, so this two, then there should be one, two, three, four, five, six. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six. So what will happen now? This magnesium has to lose two electrons. And someone has to take those two electrons. Those two electrons will be taken by oxygen. So this gives two electrons, and this oxygen takes electrons. In the process forming MgO. So MgO, it can also be written as Mg2 plus O2 minus. So that part we don't write, so write this as MgO or magnesium oxide. So remember, this is how the formations are there. As per your syllabus, only two examples which I think so is there. We don't have more than that. Let me just cross check also which other two, and those two only are required from examination point of view. You don't need to study much more than this. So, these two examples go through very nicely. I'll show you in the textbook where it is. Cells for metals. I have compound, you see. Okay, sorry, I made a mistake. One is sodium chloride, one is magnesium chloride. Not magnesium oxide. Magnesium chloride, only these two things are there. Magnesium chloride. Chloride also will be the same as sodium chloride. If you take magnesium chloride, if you want to see, I'll show you magnesium chloride also. So have a look at magnesium chloride, how it will be. See, magnesium chloride also is the same. Magnesium 12, this remains the same. Uh, magnesium chloride Cl2. So let's see. Chlorine is 17. Electronic configuration will be 2, 8, and 7. So magnesium chlorine will be Cl minus 1 electron. It will become Cl minus. You got that? Cl minus. So Cl 1, 2, and this last one has got 7. 1, 2, 3. Four, five, six, seven. Now there is a catch. Magnesium has to give two electrons, but chlorine can take only one electron. So it takes that one electron. Now this chlorine is very happy, it has got its noble gas configuration. But this magnesium still has got one more electron to give. So what will happen? There will be one more chlorine which will come, and this chlorine will take up that electron. So this chlorine will take up the battery. So as a result, what is the formula of magnesium chloride? Magnesium chloride will be Mg. How many Cl are there? There are two Cl, so it becomes Cl2. So this is the 
diagrammatic representation of formation of magnesium chloride. So as per your syllabus, you have got this two only, one is sodium chloride, one is magnesium chloride. Normally any one can be asked in the exam. But if you go by last year's syllabus, this was removed. This is not been a part of the syllabus if we follow the last year's syllabus. But if you follow the real syllabus, And since this is follow what not, this is a part of us about at this moment. Only if the new syllabus comes out, then we will see. So we'll wind up for today. Thank you. Take care. We'll meet on.